Rakata, Baru de Zu Praka Sataya, Baru de Zekete Baruka Sebradi, Le Pando Shakata, Le Pando Celebro Zikete Kunda Yakata, Kunda Yazu Katata, Braku Sekete, Baru de Kaso Darikata, Le Ku Sele Baru de Kado do Prakataya, Ishakata maru se baru kate reke de zo zizalo maru kata spirit of the living God have your way this hour have your way have your way Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus e pasoko to barakata we submit to the authority of Christ even now in the name of Jesus we bring every thought of the mind every distraction completely under the authority of Christ in the name of Jesus Holy Ghost have your way Holy Ghost have your way Father we thank you Father we thank you we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we give you all adoration marcado sata barukate ishadaya sonde ke de ko subrakata i paduka saparakata le ke de shala baru de ka subrakate in the name of jesus blessed be your holy name oh god Blessed be your holy name, Kasukata Brakata. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, because you are God all by yourself. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Father, we honor you. Father, we thank you. We exalt your holy name. We magnify your name this morning. Ah, Sakobra Katarakate. Faithful is he that faithful is he Sobra Kata. Shakatabarakate. Lord, we judge the faithful. He says, Faithful is he that promised. Father in heaven, we say, hallowed be thy name. We judge you faithful. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. In the name of Jesus, ha so parakate, le kusha di parunde ka so brakataya. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord bless you. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessings to you. Wherever you're connecting from, the Lord bless you. As many as will listen to these messages, as many as will make a faith, a faith connection with this sermon, with this teaching, let it change your life. Let it bring transformation. Let it bring healing. Let it bring deliverance to you in the name of Jesus. I declare divine manifestation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Spirit revelation, Spirit revelation and knowledge. Let the power of the Holy Spirit grant you understanding. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of you is used to a particular lifestyle? For adventure, you are comfortable. And you see yourself all of a sudden coming out of your comfort zone. It's the hardest thing anybody could face. Glory to God. Going beyond your comfort zone. Sometimes life throw punches. And we see ourselves coming out of the shelf. Coming out of our comfort zone to do things. For things to happen. Glory to God. And if you go through scripture... The Bible contains numerous figures, numerous people, Bible figures, or peradventure, what I would say, numerous teachings 
that encourages us, encourages believers to step out of their comfort zones, trusting God, glory to God, and growing. Because when God is molding you, or you're facing a challenge, or you're going through a phase, Sometimes what it, a whole lot of times, what it does is to refine you, to mold you. And in that process, you grow spiritually in the process. Glory to God. So when God is calling you to step out of your comfort zone, sometimes it's to prepare you for the blessings ahead. Say, for instance, God is ushering you or going to bless you in the area of finances. Sometimes you begin to experience extreme hardship, financial hardship. Glory to God. In that process, you're maturing. You're grow growing. God is teaching you accountability. God is teaching you how to be financially responsible so that when that financial blessing comes, you will be able to handle yourself. You will be able to be a good custodian of the resources that God has entrusted in your hands. You are already prepared because you know what it means to not have. So now you have it. You will not. Spend lavishly. You will be financially responsible. Glory to God. And so if you go through scripture, I'm going to talk to us about few key principles and examples to help us navigate when God is calling us out of our comfort zone, but adventure for an assignment. Glory to God. An assignment that God is giving you. You see, no human being is created without a purpose. I want you to understand it. You are not an empty vessel. God created you for a purpose. And so some people live out that purpose when you walk in the will of the Father, you live a purposeful life. And the worst thing that can happen to a man is to live a life without achieving your purpose. We all have different assignments. We all have different purposes. Or what you may call destiny. You have yours, I have mine. The question is how many people have identified their purpose in life and are living it. How many Christians, believers, are living a purposeful life? Glory to God. And so, how do we embrace God's purpose? Hallelujah. The one number one key principle is trust in God's plan. You got to trust the process. You got to trust God. Absolutely. Glory to God. So most times, living one's comfort zone involves trusting in God. Even when his plans are unclear. Because sometimes God will give you an assignment. God is ushering you into a new level. He has spoken to you. He doesn't give you the entire picture. He will not give you the entire picture. God wants to see obedience. Hallelujah. But in most cases, it will require you to do things that you're not accustomed to. Hallelujah. And so in this, at this point, it is going to require faith that God always a higher God ways are higher than our ways. 
So you got to trust in the plan of God. Look at Abraham. Bible says this is a Abraham was is a worthy man. According to scripture, it says he is rich in cattle and livestock. He was not an ordinary man. He was a very influential man. He was well, he's wealthy. And this is God calling Abraham to leave his homeland. Do you know what that means? Leave your family, leave your friends, leave people you, maybe you grew up with your peers, your hometown. How many of you have lived overseas or have lived in a country where you were not born? You're in a foreign land. Do you know how that feels? Especially when you don't have family in a foreign land. You feel like alone. You feel like you're on your own. And this here, God is calling out Abraham out of his comfort zone to leave his homeland, to leave his family and everything he's familiar with to go to a land he would show him. Read Genesis chapter 12. God called him out. You are going to be the father of many nations, but I want you to do something out of ordinary. Something that ordinarily you wouldn't want to do. I am calling you out of your comfort zone. Glory to God. Abraham didn't have the clearest picture of what God was or where God wants him to go. God called him out. Even though I am going to make you father of many nations, but I need you to be separated from what you are used to, the kind of lifestyle you have been accustomed to. Glory to God. So God called him out. But one thing we need to emulate is faith of this man. Abraham's faith in God's promise led him to leave his comfort zone setting the stage for God to fulfill his covenant with him this is a man that has been promised God has made a covenant that he will be the father of many nations but first you gotta do something I'm gonna call you out I'm gonna separate you glory to God Abraham had faith. And scripture says he believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. So we got to trust God. Faith in action. Scripture says our faith without work is dead. And so faith is often demonstrated through action. Especially when those actions lead beyond familiar, lead beyond safe or, uncomf or comfortable territories. Glory to God. You see Peter walking on the water. I believe that's in Matthew chapter 14. If you read from verse 28, to 29. Bible says that Peter steps out of the boat to walk on water towards Jesus. That's an act of faith. He wasn't the only one in the boat. He wasn't the only one that saw Jesus walking on the water. But he decided out of faith to meet up with Jesus on the water. He stepped out of the boat. He stepped out of that comfort zone. Glory to God. This singular act of faith required Peter to leave the safety of the boat, 
stepping into the unknown while focusing on Christ. Glory to God. Peter was not putting Jesus to the test. Not at all. We are told not to put God to test. Instead, Peter, he was, instead, he, Peter was the only one in the boat to act in faith, to react in faith. If you read that scripture, it says his spontaneous request led him to experience an unusual demonstration of God's power. Glory to God. But something happened along the line. Bible says that Peter started to sink because he took his eyes off Jesus and focused on the strong wind and high waves around him. The waves of life, the storms of life, the wind that blew, that was blowing. And so he got distracted. He took his eyes of Jesus. And the minute he did that, he began to sink. I don't know what represents waves. I don't know what represents wind. I don't know what represents the waves in your life. But I encourage you to keep your focus. Look on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't lose focus. Peter was walking on the water. He was doing just fine. Remember, he started off with faith, great faith. But the minute he lost focus, all of a sudden he realizes that he was walking on the water. And he began to sink. What happened here? His faith wavered. His faith wavered when he realized how vulnerable he was. Glory to God. We might not walk on water, but we do walk through tough situations even today. But if we focus on the wind and the waves of difficult circumstances around us without looking to Jesus for help, we too may despair and sink like Peter. Keep your gaze on him. Keep your focus on him. And to maintain your faith when situations are difficult, focus on the power of Jesus rather than on your inadequacies. Glory to God. We all face tough situations. We all experience the waves, the storms, the winds of life. What you do when you experience those will determine your outcome, your final outcome. But I guarantee you, if you keep your focus on Jesus, the power of God, you will not sink like Peter. You can start off by putting faith in action. But it's not enough to have that initial faith. You got to sustain it. You got to make sure it is sustained. And how do you sustain it? By focusing, not losing focus. Don't be distracted. Glory to God. Don't be distracted. Don't listen to naysayers. You can't do this assignment. God is, you are the only one that God spoke to when God talked to you. Glory to God. If it's an assignment, the resources to carry out the assignment will be made available. God sponsors his own project. Glory to God. You have to overcome fear with courage. You got to overcome fear with courage. 
Scripture says that the righteous is as bold as the lion. You got to be bold. God frequently calls us. God frequently calls his followers to face their fears. Face your fears. Trust him for the strength to persevere. Look at Gideon. We know this story about Gideon. Gideon was a man called by God to lead Israel against the Midianites. I want you to read Judges chapter 6 to chapter 7. Bible says initially Gideon was fearful and hesitant. But eventually he stepped out in obedience and courage trusting that God would be with him. Tell someone to say one, God is with me. Jesus is with us. He's God Emmanuel, God with us. When you're going through that phase, when you're going through those tough situations and circumstances, he is with you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Gideon overlooked his inadequacies. He made a bold step to lead the people of God. And the Bible says he was made a judge over Israel. He delivered the people. Glory to God. So sometimes growth comes through trials. When you step out of your comfort zone, one thing I know for a fact is that it leads to spiritual growth and maturity. Growth through trials. Hallelujah. Stepping out of one's comfort zone often involves facing trials. Jesus did not say that you won't face trials. But you, when you face them, he said, do not be afraid for I have overcome the world. You have the overcoming grace. You have the overcoming anointing. Sometimes stepping out of one's comfort zone will make you face trials, persecutions, but ultimately, those would lead to spiritual maturity and growth. Look at Joseph. Sold into slavery by his brothers. They were probably thinking, oh, we have finished him. Let's see what will become of that. His, uh, dream, those his dreams. Let's see what will become of the dreams. The dreamer. But the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to the called according to his purpose. This man Joseph endured hardship and suffering outside his comfort zone. Remember he was in a foreign land away from his family away from the love of his father. He suffered in prison. Glory to God. However, God used these circumstances to prepare him for leadership and to save many people during a famine. It was all orchestrated. It was all in the plan of God, the will of the Father. This is a man living out his purpose. That was his purpose. But he faced trials. He faced persecutions. He faced extreme hardship. Before all that happened to him, before he got elevated, glory to God. 
He was sold into slavery. God could have prevented that from happening. But it was all in the master plan of God for his life. Hallelujah. I say all this to encourage someone that no matter what you're going through, trust the process. Trust God. You will come out triumphantly, victoriously. Glory to God. It will not consume you. It will never be the end of you. God is preparing you for the better. You got to endure. You got to trust him. You got to put your faith in action. Glory to God. Even preaching the gospel, witnessing for Jesus, will come with persecution, would come with trials. We have been called to share the gospel, to be witnesses for Christ. Sometimes you step out of your personal comfort zone to reach people, to reach out to people, to preach the gospel with different people with different beliefs. And even in unfamiliar settings, you can be living in America or Europe and God says, go to Africa. I'm sending you to Zambia. I'm sending you to Cameroon on a mission trip, missionary trip. What are you going to do? It is all about Jesus. You may be living very comfortably in America or, you, or, or London, UK. And God is telling you to go to Africa to preach for his work. That's out of your, uh, physically, that's out of your comfort zone. You don't even know what you're going to face when you go to that part of the world that you're not used to or you don't leave. Glory to God. I have an apostle here in America that evangelizes, goes all over the world. She's an American citizen. But God will say, go to Liberia. God will say, go to Jamaica. You, I need you there. She, now she's going, going out of her comfort zone to go preach Jesus. To spread the gospel. And that is the, the great commission. Believers are called to share the gospel, gospel, often requiring them to step outside of their personal comfort zones to reach people with different beliefs or even in a very unfamiliar setting. Glory to God. The apostles, for instance, after Jesus' ascension, the apostles were tasked commissioned to spread the gospel throughout the world. Glory to God. Despite persecution and difficulties that they experienced, they moved. They moved beyond their comfort zones to fulfill the great commission. Glory to God. That's the assignment. They understood the assignment and they carried it out effectively, relying on the strength of God. The strength of God. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Spirit to help us. We don't have our, the strength of our own. We don't have our own strength. We rely on the strength of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. When we step out of our comfort zone, it's an opportunity 
to rely more on God's power, to rely more on God's strength than our own abilities. We do not have any power of our own. He says, it's, neither, it's not by my power nor by my might, but by my spirit, say yet the Lord of hosts. We don't have our own abilities. We cannot function on our own. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. And so when it becomes tough, don't rely on your strength. It says, in strength shall no man prevail. Glory to God. It is the Holy Spirit that helps us. The Spirit gives life. And the flesh profited nothing. If you rely on your strength, you will fail. You will fail woefully. What can you do on your own? Hallelujah. I'll give you another example so we move on. Moses. Think about Moses. Moses was prepared. He lived a life of purpose. He was raised in Egypt. So he would get accustomed with the traditions their values, their norms. God was preparing him to be the one that would lead the people out of Egypt. When God called him or gave him the assignment, he was very reluctant. Moses was reluctant when God called him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Look at what scripture says in Exodus. Exodus chapter 14, verse number 13. It says, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. He says, for the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. I don't know what represents Egypt in your life. I don't know what seems like is an oppression or slavery in your life. God is cutting it out today. In the name of Jesus, you will not be oppressed. He says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Your freedom, your liberty has come. Today in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Moses was reluctant because he began to look at his inadequacies, his shortcomings. Oh, how can I lead these people? They are very stubborn. They are very resilient. How am I going to cope? I don't have what it takes. And Bible says God sent him help. Our adventure, he was a stutter. He stutters. He had speech impairment. So he was worried about how he's going to address the people. How am I going to talk to these people? And God says, God says, don't worry. And God gave him error. So we can understand his hesitancy. And that's what happens when you begin to look at what you have and what you don't have to carry out the work, the assignment. We all face situations in this life that seem impossible. Moments where it feels like we are trapped between a rock and a hard place. Just like the Israelites in Exodus 14. We may find ourselves standing before what seems like an insurmountable obstacle with our enemies pressing in from behind. Have you ever been in that situation that you don't know whether to move forward or to go backwards? You feel stuck. The Egyptian, the Israelites, the people of God, Bible says we're trapped between the Red Sea and the Egyptian army. And they were terrified. Of course they would be. Who wouldn't be terrified? 
I don't know what represents Red Sea in your life. Every Red Sea situation, let it be lifted. Let it be overturned by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And so the Bible says in the moment of desperation, Moses, Moses speaks words that resonate deeply even today. He says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What a man of faith. What a leader. Glory to God. Have you ever been in a situation and you're just the right word, the right word of encouragement just comes along. Then here we are, Moses telling the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. These words teach us valuable lessons about how to face the Egyptians in our lives. The problems, the challenges, and the enemies that seem to hold us captive. See, this dispensation is the dispensation that we take what rightfully belongs to us by force. We're not negotiating with the enemy. We face the enemy squarely. Glory to God. And so in this moment of desperation, panic, Moses speaks words that resonate deeply. The Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You might behold captive. You might be in that situation for way too long that you feel like you're stuck. It's the Lord is saying this morning, do not be afraid. Stand still. Be unmovable and see the deliverance of the Lord. The Egyptians represent your present challenges. The Egyptians in this story represent the enemies of God's people, those who oppressed them, had them in captivity, had them in bondage, and sought to destroy them. I don't know who is seeking to destroy your life. They are the Egyptians, the, your spiritual Egyptians. They also may represent the struggles we face today. The whole world is in a panic. Fear of the unknown, doubt, sin, addiction, and circumstances that may feel overwhelming. Sometimes, just like the Israelites, we are tempted to look back in fear, wondering how we will ever escape from our present circumstances. Glory to God. I ask you this morning, it doesn't even matter what the Egyptians in your life are. It doesn't matter. You are more than a conqueror. You, you are an overcomer. Just try and pinpoint what the Egyptians in your lives today are. It might be a situation at your job. It might be a failed marriage. It might be a broken relationship. It might be a health problem, a medical issue. Or even your own fears and doubts. Whatever it is, my dear friends, it feels like it is chasing you down. An escape seems impossible. Identify these challenges and face them squarely with boldness, with courage do not be afraid 
when we see these Egyptians, our natural response is usually fear. Fear grips us. Fear paralyzes us and makes us feel powerless. But Moses here gives a simple command, do not be afraid. God knows that fear can cloud your vision. Fear can cloud our vision, distort our perception of realities, and keep us from trusting him. Fear is a spirit. Kill the spirit. Fear not, because God is with you. He has a plan. Even when you can't see it, Just as he was preparing to part the Red Sea for the Israelites, he's preparing a way through your problems. He's preparing a way through your difficulty. He's preparing a way through those challenges. Just stand still. You see, sometimes when we are faced with overwhelming challenges, our instinct, our first instinct is to run, to, to fight back or try to solve the problem in our own strength. But Moses here tells the Israelites something counterintuitive. Stand still. Are you serious? They are coming. Pharaoh's army are encroaching and you're telling us to stand still. What, what sort of what sort of words are those? What kind of advice is that? That's the natural man. But in essence, Moses wasn't telling them to not do anything. This means doesn't mean doing nothing. It means placing your trust in God and waiting on his deliverance, waiting on his salvation. It doesn't literally mean hold your hands and do nothing. Moses was actually saying trust in God, trust in his power, trust that he can deliver you. That's all it is. So standing still is about shifting your focus from the problem to the one who is able to solve it. Standing still is a posture of faith. I will say that again. It is a posture of faith. That's what that means. I am unshakable. Glory to God. So instead of panicking or striving in your own strength, learn to stand still. Learn to stand still in moments of crisis. Trust that God is working behind the scenes. It is in these still moments that we often see the clearest display of God's power. When you're panicking, you probably would not move God. You would not move God. And so you can, cannot experience his power, his miracle, his deliverance. It is when you are in your still moment that you're able to see a clear picture of the power of God, the salvation of the Lord. God's response to the Israelites' impossible situation was miraculous. You will receive a miracle today in the name of Jesus. He parted the Red Sea allowing them to pass through on dry land. And he closed it over the pursuing Egyptians, wiping them out completely. God saved them in a way they could never have anticipated. That will be your portion. Sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes we can't imagine how God would deliver us. But our lack of understanding doesn't limit God's power. Just because you don't know, just because you lack understanding, does not limit his power to save. The same God 
who parted the Red Sea is the God who can part the waters in your life today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the unchanging changer. But his salvation may come in ways you don't expect, but it will definitely come. The Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more forever. This is God's promise of total victory. This is God's promise of total victory. The Israelites would never again be tormented by the Egyptians. It is permanent. It is done. The enemy that pursued them would be gone forever. That enemy pursuing your life would be surmounted, would be overturned forever. And this can be applied to all the bondages to all the struggles in your own life that you are facing even today, when God brings deliverance, it is complete. I will say that again. Somebody might want to note this. When God brings deliverance, it is complete. It is complete deliverance. It is permanent. He doesn't just help us manage our problems. He sets us free from them. He says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Trust the deliverance God brings to us. Trust that the deliverance God, God brings is final. I need you to trust. The Egyptians you see today, the things that oppress and chase you will have no power over you forever. Glory to God. When God moves, he moves them from your life for good. When God moves, he moves. He removes the enemy. He removes the Egyptians from your life forever. Anything that represents oppression, anything that represents slavery, is taken away forever in the name of Jesus. And so this message of Exodus 14, 13, is one of hope, is one of trust and victory. God fights for his people. God will fight for you. And you have your peace. No matter what you're facing, no matter what the situation is, remember these three things. Do not fear. Do not entertain fear. God is in control. Stand still. Trusting in his timing and his plan. See his salvation. See his deliverance. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. The Egyptians you see today, the problems and the enemies you face are not permanent. God is preparing to part the seas in your life. God is preparing to part the Red Seas in your life. And when he does, those challenges, those problems will be gone forever for good. Let us move in faith. Let us move in faith. Let us take action in faith. Trusting that the God who delivered the Israelites would deliver us from our own Egyptians in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just to wrap it up, I want you to note a few scriptures, the word of God. They are scriptural prophecies over your life. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, So do not fear. So do not fear. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. And help you. I will uphold. 
uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is God talking to you. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. So do not fear. For I am with you. And he goes for that. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When God gives you an assignment, a task, believe in his power, believe in his strength. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, 13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Paul was not talking about his own strength, the strength of God, the power of God. Finally, fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. Kill the spirit. Second Timothy 1 chapter 7, say, chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Come to God. And so from all we have been talking about, all these examples we have given you, show how stepping out of one's comfort zone can lead to deeper faith, personal growth, and a great reliance on God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God is asking you to move, or to go beyond your comfort zone. Don't see it as a punishment. God is ushering you to your next level. Hallelujah. Take that bold step. and It will be well with you. It is well with you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Do well to subscribe to our channel. And to share the message for someone. Just someone who is going through life, who is going through challenges, who is going through difficulties. This will encourage and bless that man, that woman. Hallelujah. To the glory of God. God bless you. Step out in faith. Take action by faith in Jesus' mighty name. And I'll see you again. Pretty soon, God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful, glorious rest of the week. And I will see you again. Bye-bye.